So I went on Tucker Carlson, the program, not the person, to talk about recent attacks and how a whole story is beginning to unravel. <coughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom. Thank you for your ongoing support and for being part of this movement as we oppose clear, coherent, cogent, yet insidious, intertwined interests in order to become free together. If you want to support us, click the link in the description to become an Awakened Wonder and you get additional content. We do an additional video every week. You get early access. You get to participate when we interview what I would call real journalists. And right now, there's an exclusive conversation between me and Tucker Carlson that you cannot get without becoming a supporter of our content, an additional conversation that we did together. Of course, you may already have seen the conversation I had on Tucker Carlson's network. Likely you saw it on X or wherever you saw it. It was an interesting conversation. Let's have a look at it together and allow me to give you some additional information and show you how the timeline unfolded in a little more detail. Back in September, media outlets around the world, almost all of them here in the West and the English speaking world, ran headlines that shocked a lot of readers and viewers. Russell Brand, the movie star, the comedian, now the podcaster, was a sex criminal, a bad man, a sex criminal. A lot of people pointed out at the time, you're not in any mainstream movies, you're not on the TV, you're not in the media, you're a marginal figure. How extraordinary this amount of time and attention is being spent. It was astonishing, really. Also, many journalists I respect asked, who do you think is behind this? The military industrial complex, the pharmaceutical industry, and I still, feel, as I said, on Tucker, it seems sort of grandiose to go, oh yeah, the system's out to get me, because it sort of seems somehow preposterous. And in fact, it's beyond that. In a way, these systems, as we are learning, are about data and information. They don't care about an individual. They just observe trends online. This is information that we don't want talked about. De-amplify that. This is information we do want talked about. And if you happen to be associated with one set of data, you are in serious trouble. Now, none of the outlets ran the names of the accusers who had been sexually abused by Russell Brand. That was conspicuously absent. But the judgment was overwhelming. This is a very bad man, and he needs to be taken out of public view for the sake of the rest of us. What was interesting about this is that, in fact, it was the final scene in a long movie that had been playing out for the preceding couple of years outside of public view. This was an attempt to make Russell Brand shut up. Russell Brand has views that diverge from those of most Western governments on big issues, not small things, big issues, questions of economic policy and war and peace. And they decided we have to make this man be quiet. Why Russell Brand? Well, because in contrast to a lot of us who give our opinions for a living, Russell Brand had the capacity to win people over from the other side. He hadn't spent a life identified with the far right, just the opposite. Russell Brand was a man of the left, and to most people, a cultural figure. Everyone knows who Russell Brand is. And so he had the power, the capacity to persuade, and that was the threat. So here's some additional information from our own internal research facilities. March 2022, UK government organisation Code of Story publishes a story on its anti-disinformation newsletter linking Russell Brand broadcasts on Ukraine with pro-China propaganda. The organisation is funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, the non-profit under the State Department that was spun out of CIA initiatives in the 1980s. You can go back and look at the content we were making in March 22. A lot of it stands up pretty well, actually. We were asking questions about the handling of the pandemic worldwide. We were also questioning the legitimacy of Western funding of the conflict between Ukraine and Russia and its potential to escalate out of control. Look at what's happened in the meantime. It's extraordinary, isn't it, to see the UK government, CIA-inspired organisations, accusing an online public commentator of spreading Chinese propaganda. To this day, I don't know what that might even mean. I don't have strong views about China. I certainly don't advocate for China's political policy or cultural policy. I'm sort of a bit interested in Buddhism and ninjas. That's about it. September 2022. Logically AI is hired and paid $3.2 million by the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Logically AI disputes Brand's criticism of the central bank digital currency and claims such concerns are just conspiracy theories without evidence. Ironically providing us with some evidence that many of these theories have some validity. We would have been talking about central currencies and their potential to be manipulated and to facilitate social credit score type systems where in conjunction potentially 
with passports for certain medical measures. They could be used to, for example, freeze people's bank accounts, as has happened already in China. Or people who haven't taken certain medications could be refused access to certain venues, as has happened across the world already. Or people applying for universities might not be permitted to get into that university, as recommended by Anthony Fauci when talking about universities and said when people are told they won't be able to join a certain university, they'll lose their ideological bullshit. So many of these stories, all of these stories, in fact, are either based on publicly available content, the views of academics, and admittedly, when it came to the pandemic, often the views of academics who themselves have been censored. And much of the reporting that we've looked at indicates that I'm not alone in this kind of censorship. I'm just one of the more public and visible figures conveying information that is widely available. Indeed, in the comments under here, many of you will be going, I've known this for ages, won't you? I knew this years ago. What took you so long to catch up when it comes to the Ukraine war or the CIA or Project Paperclip or disinformation or malinformation or misinformation? There's no claim that this information is exclusively available here, just that clearly it must have caught the attention of people that care about it. And indeed, we've made Freedom of Information Act a request to many of these organisations. And it's astonishing when you do it, they really drag their heels. They do not want to hand over the information about how extensively they've been spying on you, surveilling you. For concern about CBDCs to be dismissed as a conspiracy theory is yet more ridiculous when we know that during the trucker protest, people did have their bank accounts frozen and it's since been decreed that that was illegal activity. We were simply pointing out that CBDCs would make it even easier for governments to shut down private citizens' personal finances than it already is. We already know that many tech sites that handle finance and funding will cooperate with governments. And we commented some years ago, I mean, the content ends up, you can go and look at it yourselves. We simply commented that this would be vulnerable to exploitation. And I think that's pretty legitimate. Indeed, many of the stories that we cover are centrally about the transference of individual personal sovereignty to state or corporate interests, and often significantly partnerships between corporate and state interests, which is precisely what's happening here. Groups like Logically AI or many of the other agencies that seem to be involved in just this story receive government funding, that's taxpayer funding, that's your pounds and dollars in taxes in order to spy on you, surveil you, and clearly, as you'll hear later, publicly attack you. November 2022, Think Tank, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, hired by the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport. You've heard that name a couple of times now, and that is the department that Caroline Dynage, MP, runs. Caroline Dynage is, of course, the member of parliament that petitioned X, Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram to demonetize, censor and control our content. And in the case of YouTube, they responded positively. This is the department that was receiving government funding to carry out this type of operation. November 2022, Think Tank, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, hired by the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport, targets Russell Brand as a conspirituality influencer that promotes anti-climate narratives. Multiple UK newspaper articles from newspapers including The Times, Telegraph and Independent label Russell Brand a conspiracy theorist for his videos regarding big pharma vaccines and US government foreign policy and the military industrial complex, although there were pieces also in The New York Times, The Atlantic and numerous other legacy media sites. We also have reports it's somewhat extensively on the Trusted News Initiative, which are a conglomerate or cartel of legacy media organisations allied together against independent media and can support one another. The days of legacy media companies competing with one another for scoops are long gone. They are competing against independent media and essentially, as they themselves explicitly admit, attempting to choke out, control and destroy independent media, usually through misinformation and malinformation type angles. August 2023. Public Good Partnerships, a content moderation non-profit funded by a lobby group for Pfizer and Moderna, repeatedly targets Brand as a conspiracy theorist for pointing out revolving door corruption in the UK and for discussing evidence that the US government misled the public about the justification for vaccine mandates. Now, I know you're a well-informed audience, so you know how well undergirded those arguments are. I also know that you are aware of that actual revolving door, and you can actually see the faces and know the names of some of the people in that revolving door. Jonathan Van Tam, who was significant in this country, for advising people to take vaccines now works at Moderna. You'll be aware that at least two FDA officials now work at Moderna. The fact that there are financial ties and relationships between private corporations, in particular big pharma, military industrial complex, the financial
financial industry, the energy industry, and the state is hardly a conspiracy theory. You can observe that, you can track that, it's visible, it's understood, it's evident, it's obvious. Nowhere in its reports on Brand did Moderna highlight any incorrect information, but the reports noted that they monitored Brand because he has a large platform with over 6.6... 6.7, that's misinformation. 6.7 million YouTube subscribers and over 21 million followers across multiple social media platforms. Moreover, his videos are widely circulated in anti-vaccine spaces where he's viewed as a truth teller and a threat to authority and that Brand maintains support from Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk. These are just a few of the peculiar investigations and operations involving the government, deep state, former employees, deep state inspired agency, big pharma funded organizations prior to the legacy media attacks in September. September 2023, Brand is subject to an investigation by the Times, the Sunday Times, and Channel 4's dispatches. Themselves, legacy media organizations, cooperate in, in a shared endeavor. YouTube demonetizes Brand's channel without there being any content violations on the platform. This is the first time a content creator has been financially punished by the company for reasons other than the videos published on the site. Joe Ondrak, Logically AI's investigations head, provided different quotes to nearly half a dozen news outlets, including Vice, Wired, the BBC, and two separate articles in the Times that depicted Brand as a dangerous purveyor of misinformation who had finally been held to account. So Joe Ondrak, Logically's head of investigation, is essentially a government-funded proxy whose funding comes from you, the taxpayer, telling you that we convey dangerous information without ever telling you that you fund him telling you that via the government who plainly have an agenda. I mean, an agenda perhaps is a pejorative term because governments have to have policies, they have to have ideas, you have to decide whether or not you trust them, their ideas, their policies or agenda. Logically claims that social media accounts trotting out the innocent until proven guilty refrain were among those perpetuating common myths about sexual assault. The site published a follow-up video reiterating the claim that those seeking the presumption of innocence for Brand, a principle dating back to the Magna Carta, were spreading a dangerous myth. It's difficult for me to be objective on a subject that so plainly includes me and in this instance is about me. But what I can safely say is not about me is the Magna Carta and the presumption of innocence. Those are principles that have been valued since the dawn of civilization of this nature. And the idea that a government funded agency paid proxies that exist solely to crush dissent would start to invite us to challenge some of our deepest held beliefs about the judiciary, about democracy, about civilization, about sovereign individual rights, about the Magna Carta itself, shows you that what's been attempted is some kind of cultural reset that will play out way beyond this individual story. For me, this is part of that Orwellian doublespeak trend that we're seeing everywhere. When you see Jens Stoltenberg saying, we have to continue with the war, it's the only way to get peace. That the meaning of language is being flipped before our very eyes. A kind of psyop against an entire population. A kind of berserker principle designed to leave us all collectively bewildered about what right and wrong are anymore. I mean, you increasingly feel like you're not able to speak or open your mouth in case you say the wrong thing, that the rules might have changed. Well, the rules are changing. Now, innocent until proven guilty is being trotted out as a myth. The Magna Carta, a foundational principle, a keystone of most democracies, along with the American Constitution and many other semi-sacred if secular pieces of documentation are being regarded as ideas that can be dispensed with. To what end? To what purpose? Ultimately, what it seems to me is to legitimize control, to shut down dissent, to create a censorship industrial complex that's already been created, but to ensure that the power of said complex is absolute, that the trajectory of power can continue uninterrupted, that all dissenting voices can be shut down, and that people can be kept in a state of docile, uninformed compliance. So um, I, I, I didn't know any, I just want to say I didn't know any of this. And I was, I experienced you because I didn't know you as a viewer. And I remember thinking, boy, that is one of the most articulate critiques of the brand new war in Ukraine I had ever seen. I saw one of your videos on the war in Ukraine. And this was in the winter of 2022, two years ago. Um, and you were making kind of a remarkable case, not against the Ukrainian people and certainly not in favor of Russia, but that there might be real implications for the West if we get involved in a war that is not our own. And you, you I thought, said it so well. Tucker Carlson himself had a very particular role in the culture up until recently. He's someone that's worked on MSNBC. He's also famously worked on Fox, becoming a phenomena on that channel. And I, belonging to the cultural groups that you might assume I belong to, always was somewhat suspicious about Fox anchors. Indeed, you can look on YouTube right now and see us deliberately riling 
trolling Bill O'Reilly and deliberately trolling Fox as an institution and getting into it on a variety of subjects like war in the Middle East, the nature of their funding, their conservatism, all sorts of I would say, anti-establishment attacks. I have remained anti-establishment for many, many years. Clearly, Tucker Carlson is a person that's always had a particular perspective in the culture, but the culture has kind of moved around this outspoken pundit. Tucker Carlson was kicked out of Fox News for a bunch of reasons that are still quite clandestine and ill understood. No one really knows why Tucker Carlson was sacked from Fox, but some people think it's because he became increasingly outspoken around war, specifically anti-war narratives. And I'm still struck that claim the mantle of progressive or liberal don't identify that Tucker Carlson is perhaps one of the most outspoken critics of war or war anywhere in the world. And for me, the position of peace, of diplomacy, of ending war wherever possible, ought be a principle that wherever you are in the political political spectrum you aspire to. The idea now that war is becoming normalised as a kind of progressive perspective shows us once again how meaning is being flipped and inverted. War is good now. War is peaceful. War is progressive. War is necessary. In a sense, this conversation is a product of a cultural shift. Figures that used to exist within the media mainstream are drifting into new spaces. And we're not alone in that. Chris Hedges, a journalist who was once a prominent New York Times reporter and Pulitzer Prize winner, has been sort of cast out into the world because of his anti-war views. Glenn Greenwell, one of the most influential news reporters of our time, now only works in online spaces. Essentially what happens, if you ask me, is legacy media spaces are entirely co-opted and essentially exist to amplify and normalise the message of the establishment. Independent media can be representative of a wide variety of views. Left, right, different cultural groups, Muslim, Judaic, Christian, secular, atheistic, materialistic, rational, all racial groups, different types of ideology. But what is emerging, if you ask me, is a kind of alliance on the periphery and a distrust of centralised organisations, whether they are state, corporate or deep state. And it's very interesting to see all of these organisations coalesce stories that particularly relate to free speech, because as is often said, free speech is a fundamental principle, because if you can control the conversation, you can control ideas around war, you can control ideas around profit, you can control all ideas. If people can't speak freely, for example, around issues during the pandemic, then you achieve a consensus and you shut down the idea even that there are alternative perspectives and points of view. In the end, what you're left with is one homogenised blob of truth virulently and vehemently controlled by centralised organisations that are struggling to work out how you can possibly control the narrative and vast populations at a time when we can all independently communicate with one another, exchange ideas, reach consensus and oppose the establishment. And that, I believe, is one of the defining, if not the defining, problem of our time. What I missed, and I'm now seeing, is that in March of 2022... You were denounced by an organization connected directly to the U.S. government as an agent of Chinese propaganda for your views on Ukraine. These, in my reading of it, and we haven't, by the way, talked about this off air, but my reading of it is that these were the early seeds of a very deceptive plant that flowered more than a year later in September when you were accused of these crimes. Um, and demonetized and, and censored as a result of that. But looking back, so you were um, accused by a group called Coda Story. It published a story on its anti-disinformation newsletter. Now, Coda Story is connected to the UK government, but it's also connected to the CIA. Um, how does it make you feel to know that you were in the crosshairs of two of the most powerful governments in the world and their intel agencies. The UK government censorship that Tucker's referring to was driven by MP Dame Caroline Dynage, the head of the UK Parliament's Culture, Media and Sports Committee. Dynage's husband was a commander in the British Army PSYOPs Division, the 77th Brigade, who were deployed straight from a tour of the Middle East, implementing behavioural change strategies against ISIS to countering dis and misinformation during the COVID-19 crisis. That sounds like such an anomalous jump and peculiar marriage, someone that works for the Department of culture, sports, media and entertainment, but ultimately advocates for censorship. Indeed, it is she who sponsored the new online safety bill, which is alarmingly similar to numerous censorship bills across the world in Brazil, in Ireland, across the EU, United States, Canada's one's already been implemented. And it's an extraordinary detail that her husband is a military figure whose particular expertise was psyops in foreign territory against terrorists whose skill set can now be deployed domestically against the homeland population. That, extraordinary though it sounds, is 
not an anomalous or even particularly unusual journey. It is very common these days for techniques and ideas that are developed to counter foreign enemies to be utilized with domestic populations. What essentially appears to be happening is our independent thought, our freedom, our ability to communicate, our ability to cultivate relationships, develop ideas, and importantly, oppose authority is being regarded as a type of terrorism. Certainly, at very least, a type of threat. This is obviously a story that's continuing to unfold and that I'm just a small part of. That's why I'm very grateful to have conversations with people like Jay Bhattacharya from Stanford, who was subject to the same kind of scrutiny from the same organizations. Journalists like Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, who report on the censorship industrial complex, and why I'm very keen to cultivate and create relationships with people from across the political spectrum because I'm beginning to think that spectrum is fracturing into a new prism of potential new light, of new relationships between different political, religious and cultural and ideological factions that previously would have been opposed to one another but are increasingly realising now that we are at a unique tipping point and unless we find new ways to resist these globalist forces together, we are one by one or in vast numbers collectively going to be facing tyranny such as we have never seen before all the while being told it's for our convenience and our safety. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the chat below? Remember, we stream every day at these times. And to see my other exclusive conversation with Tucker, become a member of our community and support this movement. You'll be most welcome. We love you. Stay free. What's happening, Tucker? Uh, what happens here tends to act as a preview for what's about to happen in the rest of the West. Ultimately, the current set of global conflicts, will they be used to legitimize further authoritarianism and control? Without question. And the irony is that control will be exerted in countries that don't have ongoing wars. I just feel sad for everyone. But I know lies when I hear them. I can't deal with it. Fox News is parting ways with primetime host and conservative commentator Tucker Carlson. How do you feel about uh, the fact that, you know, in your career, you've moved from being in one media space to a, another one that had a very different identity in terms of Fox and the role that you had there? Are you aware of the risk? Do you feel that risk? I have the great advantage of being 54, so I'm not I'm not afraid to die. You know, I'm not shooting for another 30 years in media. I think it's enough to say what I think is true now. Well, the window within which democracy operates is so narrow exactly. that you're able to present it as exactly. a type of freedom. Well, you're articulating my darkest thoughts, <laughs> which I never say out loud. But what you just said, the definition of democracy has changed from the people rule to the institutions rule. They're really afraid. They know how unpopular they are. And a lot of their decisions are made not simply out of greed and selfishness, but out of panic in the way that all illegitimate regimes behave toward the end. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.